uh, this is part two of Tribute Band. But just to recap, uh, for those of you that weren't here, uh, Ralph, I've just saved the life of uh, my hero of the band that I, that I followed. His band was called Theme, and we're a tribute band, and we, me and Don saved his life. But then he went and did the dirt, well, I'll tell you now. We're the, uh, the name of our tribute band is Them, by the way. <laughs> Biggest thing. We've got a solid following, you know, like the second division, you know, steady. Yeah. Oh. So, anyway, um, Ralph rang me about three weeks after we'd had that little meeting in the cabin when I'd saved his life, and, uh, and he said, Would well, I like to come down to his studio? And I was really excited, and I thought, Shit. Yeah, go down. So I got on the train and I, I'd, uh, I'd been writing songs over the years and I, I, I stuck a few in my back pocket. I thought I'd show them to Ralph because he's a, he's got his foot in the rock and roll hall of fame. He's got cement. You know, it's like wow, you know. And maybe he, he'll give me some pointers. So I got down there. I got off the train and turned up at the cabin, the studio, and walked in and it was quiet. It was like a church. There was graffiti on the little wooden, you know, on the walls. It was like uh, Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Bon Jella. That was Elton John. I mean, somebody written Elton John on the wall, but I don't know what that meant. I mean, somebody might like Elton John. Uh, just somebody who's, you know. Anyway, there he was, Ralph, and he brought me into the studio and he showed me around. He showed me his his headphones and the glass cabinet where he sang so uh, I was really I felt kind of privileged to be in a space where there'd been so much sacred music that I could be worshipped and I got I got a chance to sing backing vocals on one of his tracks and I, I thought I'd died and gone to heaven I was just ecstatic and I thought I'm going to show him my songs I'm going to show him the things I've written and I've got some songs, you know, can I just show them to you? And he went, yeah, yeah, and he made me some coffee and we sat down and, and I put these pieces of paper on the table and he, and he looked at them and, and he said, that song there is really good. And I was, I felt a warm wave of love go through me. I felt like a, like a bell went. <laughs> That song's got the, the fix, and that song is really good. And I left that studio and I was just walking on air. I just floated out and I floated back home again. And me and my wife, we've had, we had some really, things had really improved at home and we were warmer. We were like friends and just laughing again and sharing cereal and just flicking cereal at each other. You know, just lobbing big fucking lumps of granola at each other. You know. Fucking handfuls of it. Back again to the old days. And... <laughs> About a month later, a friend of mine rang up and he he said, uh, I just heard your song on the radio. That song The Fix. And the theme of just the theme of doing it. The theme of, I said, what the the, the they're using my song? And I said, what are you doing? Are you just, you're using my song. He said, that's not your song. Have you got copyright on it? Have you registered it? I said, what? And I was, is this how you lot carry on, you fucking rock stars? Is this your code? Is that how you people live up there in that fucking cocaine land? There was a silence and I just thought, I was just so lost and I, and then I said,
Music. 